everybody welcome back to angry badger minis if you're new to the channel please like share comment subscribe if you'd like to support us or follow us on any other platforms the links are all down below in the description and we're doing our best to be here live eight o'clock at night eastern standard time in the united states every day um barring any other videos that we might make that being said um wanted to talk to you guys uh <laughs> i'm a little upset um, so started getting back into, you know, getting the other two earth shaker cans squared away, um, to get them done. Right. Well, everybody see this right here. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to make the part that I need. I can't stink and believe it. I mean, I guess I can, uh, but essentially what we're missing because that one's in there right now and it's still cooling down is this part right here let me show you let me get these off is this part right here i can't believe it that whole big giant piece is just missing off of one of my earthshaker carriages so that sucks i'm hoping that i can make it uh it's got some weird angles to it and stuff and this is instant mold and so I'm hoping that this is going to work. Um, I'm going to let it, you know, cool down exponentially because one, the mold stuff was, you know, pretty, pretty warm. And then of course I'm dealing with resin, so I don't want to warp the, you know, warp the part any more than I need to. Um, so we're dealing with that. I didn't even cut it off the sprue, as you can see. Um, the second thing is, uh, I got, and it's it's kind of an oxymoron. It's kind of a, a I don't know, just a kick in the face, man, really. Um, because today I got my parts that were missing from the command squads from Forge World. And it was this whole big to-do, you know, with them. Uh, matter of fact, here they are right here. I was missing, just so you, just to put this in perspective, this is what I was missing. One set of shoulder pads five bases and two brass rods that's all i was asking for i wasn't trying to you know screw them over or anything like that i said look this is what's missing and that's what was missing it was this whole rigmarole to try to even get the stuff but well, we don't normally do this you know and you know do you have your receipt and i have all this email traffic that says you know because uh, i had my car broken into at a place where you should live in a different state and all this kind of stuff and they stole every bag that was in there and just so happened I had all my nice Forge World books in a bag and the receipt, you know, was in there as well. Um, but anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so anyway, they, basically they, it sounded like they didn't even want to do it. You know, they didn't even want to, you know, give me the parts or, or anything like that. And again, it's not like I'm asking for much. They even went so far to say, well, we sell this stuff, you know, if you'd like to buy it. And I'm like, no, man. I spent, you know, I mean, uh, thousands and thousands of dollars on this army and everything, and you can't even help a brother out. <laughs> so, I was I was nice and cordial about it. I kind of just, you know, tried to do the best I could, you know, not to, you know, anger the beast, if you will, that I'm trying to, you know, literally get honey from, and um, and then that arrives today, and then this happens today. <laughs> I'm just like, what the hell is going on here? So, um, anyway, um, I'm going to be, you know, working on the other two and obviously we know how they go together, but before we get in, I want to show you guys some of the stuff I did. Uh, also that was another thing last night, the, um, I found out that the arms they sent me for my artillery crew were not the correct arms for at least, uh, six of them. I, I don't even know what those arms would go to. Uh, I mean, they're obviously Krieg death Corps, but they're not for the artillery crew. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you which one I'm talking about here. Uh, this one and this one. So, these right here, and, and it's probably not going to show up too well on the camera, so I apologize. But I had to cut and move things around to make them work. And these weren't too bad, okay, for this particular model. It wasn't too bad for him to be able to hold the shell. But when it got to the next guy... <laughs> this one you might actually be able to see better see that cut that's what I had to do to get it to look halfway decent and then I had to put this arm on which is supposed to be a kind of ramrod um, 
and, I, and I'm going to see if I can put something on you know, on it. Um, it's not, you know, it doesn't magnetize or anything to the round. I mean, that would be, you know, definitely detrimental. But I, that's what I was able to, to come up with. Now, it'll be easy to fill that little gap in, you know what I mean? It's not a big deal. Um, and you won't even notice it. I mean, who's going to pick the model up and go, oh, let's we'll see what he did, you know? That's not going to happen. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely workable, and it looks, in my mind, halfway decent. I mean, you wouldn't even notice but again, you know, it was not, I mean, for the purchase, it was not the perfect scenario for the money spent. Now, again, I bought this army back in 2014. So, you know, it is what it is. Then, on a, on a happier note, one thing I did was, that, well, I had, I had an extra guy um, because I took one of those guys and made the final company, or I'm sorry, command uh, squad that I needed uh, for my group with a Vox operator and the regimental standard or the standard bear, whatever. Um, I had to cut the hands and turn them over and stuff like that so they didn't look awkward. Um, and that, that wasn't too bad. I'll, I'll probably drill a hole. Um, sorry, let me get this, put this guy down. I'll probably drill a hole in this guy's hands right here just to give it some definition. Um, you know, right there where his thumb and his hands are, um, you know, later on. But, you know, that's what I had to do to make, to make that work. Um, the Vox operator wasn't too bad. Um, I just don't like the pose because all my other Vox operators are kind of taking a knee, if you will. Um, then, with this extra guy, he just so happened to become a platoon commander. Um, since I didn't have one, and I really didn't have a place for this guy to go or arms, that would have worked out. But I had plenty of command upgrades. And so it worked out. So he can either be platoon commander, company commander, or, uh, you know, uh, an auxiliary officer that I might need to, to beef up to, you know, to, to make the list legal or something like that. Who knows? So we did that. Then, because, you know, I was thinking back to, you know, the realism of stuff, you would not have, and, and I did not, I'm trying to think if I saw this on Forge World or not. I don't think I did. Um, I can't remember. I don't think the Forge World models had, um, what am I trying to say? I don't think that they had these guys, you know, that are carrying these rounds and whatnot. I don't think that they had uh, las guns on them. And that would make sense to me because they can't be trying to load shells and do all this stuff with damn guns, you know, flopping around on them. And they're going to be back, you know, well away from the enemy. Um, so they're, for the most part, relatively protected unless, you know, all of a sudden a you know, a bunch of gene stealers pop up out of nowhere or what have you. Um, or Space Marines dropped in on them, but you, you get what I'm saying. So, what I elected to do, and then while it's not perfect, it's just a throwback to my time in the Marine Corps. And any basic, you know, rifleman would see this or know this, is stack arms. Um, and I did that. I did one set for all three rifles that were needed per artillery. Um, or shaker cannon so we actually have you know three sets of them one two and three and then you have all of the guys uh, we we did up the masters of ordnance um, a little bit gave them some some bells and whistles with a pistol uh, a secondary set of binos and a backpack and um, you know it, it, it's gonna work out really well I think so but anyway, that's that's basically what we got accomplished last night and of course what's going on with this. So let's turn back to this and let's see. I think it should be relatively cool now. Had it in the freezer. Let's see if we can break this puppy open and uh, see if we were successful at, at the mold. If we were not, we'll have to redo it. Or the alternative is I'm going to take one of these flatter pieces like this. Um, I have two other options. Take the flatter piece and try to make the mold with this, which will be considerably easier. Or I'm gonna have to kind of bury that leg in the, 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 the terrain, you know, of the, whatever it is that I mount it to, as if it's just under dirt or something and you can't see it, or sandbag to death, if that makes sense to you. But I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this is gonna work out. It just, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. You just gotta redo it and keep redoing it. 
and you may ask yourself why don't you just write forge world and say hey man send me another part well like i said they told me straight up we don't normally do this so the chances are i'm not going to get the part and it took two weeks for those you know those bases and the set of shoulder pads and the brass rods to come so who knows what these guys are even you know i gotta be careful here too because this resin will possibly snap if i do it wrong and i tried to make sure that i could get the hole inside of ah man i can see it too i think i got it yeah it's oh that was close all right so i don't know if you guys can make this out but that that little bead right there was in the hole of this so um, what I'm not seeing or what's disturbing here is that I pushed this underneath to make sure I was getting the full full deal here what I may have to do is I may have to go ahead and cut that bead out or at least cut this top out and then just let it be a solid piece and drill it later but uh, not too bad um, it's definitely gonna take some work getting everything in there so I'll have to take my time on that um, let's see if we can get this piece out again I don't want to break the thing yeah, that's gonna break off if I try to do that But there's so many, you know, outcroppings to this. That's why it was a pain. All right. I really don't want to break that. I mean, I can glue it back, but that's beside the point. If I can't get this one out, I'm not going to get the other one out. Well, It'll be easier or stronger to get out, but. <clears throat> and I thought about doing it sideways like this, but I wanted to see what would happen if I could do this because the bulk of this, see, I'm not so much worried about the bottom here. The bulk of the detail is on the other side. Um, and you've got those hinge hinges right there that hook that are stuck in there but they have to be otherwise I can't I can't make it come on baby don't break on me I won't do it oops that folded or something I just saw it All that's stuck in there is that one, those two hinges. Just gotta get them out. Let's see if our trusty skeleton key here can help us without breaking this. Or ruining the model or the mold. Right there is where I kind of sort of broke that. All right, I can see it. Come on, man. I'm trying not to gouge the mold at all so that I don't lose any detail. But I'm running at it. Oh, come on. Oh, I forgot about that handle. There we go. All right, Whew. as you can see, that was a lot that was stuck down in there. So, uh, your question probably is, well, how in the world are you gonna make that work? Well, this is the point where you, you know, it's not a perfect science. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna cut some of this out just so that I have at least some room to push things down. 
just a little bit. Pry it out. And hopefully we will be successful by the time it's over. It won't be the most perfect mold, obviously. Um, you know, but it's better than, than nothing. You know what I mean? I mean, nothing's going to be perfect, you know, the way, you know, like the way GW makes their stuff or Forge World or whatever. But again, I'll have, I'll have the foot where I would have added zero, nothing. And I mean, some of you might be like, well, dude, why don't you just, you know, just make a fake foot out of plastic card or something. It doesn't have to look the same and whatever. You're right. I could have done that. Um, I just don't want to. <laughs> I want to, I want to try to get as close to, you know, uh, authentic as I can um, with this and then I will work and since this is only going to be a one part you know one part mold I can bend all this out shove the you know the green stuff or whatever down in there and then when I'm done I can cut the mold free of it so I won't have to do this you know this bending deal because I don't need you know multiple pieces so but I don't, what I don't do is I don't throw these little pieces away. They all go back to, uh, they all go back to being put back together. And it takes literally two seconds for that to happen. So there's no point in throwing it away. All right, so I'm gonna work on that later. Oh, one other note, just, just for those of you that might be interested in why things look the way they do or how to do this. If you notice from this mold, okay, how I've got, you know, pieces of it that drip over the side, basically like this. They didn't drip. I I moved it over. That way, I have the actual puzzle piece, just like this. See how that is? So it fits like it's supposed to. Does that make sense? So we'll work on that another day or whatever. It's you know it's not imperative that I have that other piece to finish the model, uh, finish it up. So. That's what we're working on. Um, I was trying to get some leg work done here uh, earlier and by going through all of these wheels and um, you know cleaning up the inside of the spokes, but I still have to go back and trim them all. And so any of you guys that are here, you know, you wanna shoot the breeze, shoot the shit, whatever you wanna call it, I am all all yours in that regard while I trim this stuff up but we're got we've got all the parts for both the, the two remaining Earthshaker cannons and um, I'll be putting them together basically as an assembly line for those two Hold on, let me get this camera up so you guys can see what the heck I'm even doing Still, still getting used to having the camera right in front of my face and working, so my apologies. When I pick my head up, it makes me want to pick this up, and then you can't see what's going on, and then I can't see because I moved the camera back up. <laughs> and again, this part right here, you know, that I'm messing around with, as you can see, it's pretty gnarly. I could take the time and file it down, but I don't need to because it's going to be on the ground. You're not going to be able to see it, so not concerned about that actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through here and clip everything and then I'll go back and trim it up um, saw the uh, from the new age of Sigmar box set I saw the new orcs for there the, the heck do they call them crap I can't remember now cruel boys or whatever I don't like them they're way too skinny they remind me of Oryx, you know, and or you know, in the uh, in Lord of Rings, um, and I mean, just the way that the models are, not that they're big enough or whatever, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably be passing on that. For, you know, I'm, I'm there's another rumor out there too, I haven't had a chance yet to look at you know, the details on it, but that. Believe it or not, <laughs> they might be making plastic Krieg. Can you believe it? 
Um, I'm telling you what, man, if that happens, this army is going to get bigger for sure, massively bigger. And, and I'm probably going to have a secondary army because I want to have, you know, recreate, you know, the traitors or whatever versus, you know, the, the loyalists on Creek. Um, I won't go out of my way, of course, to buy, you know, multiple more knights and titans. I got plenty. I think I have 20, I think it's 20 knights, 20, 20, 21 or 22. I can't remember. Um, once they're all put together. So I have plenty of, you know, extra heavy fire, you know, fire support or, you know, whatever it is that we need. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I've said this in the past videos. It almost seems like that's the direction they're going because you can't really get anything, you know? Um, and you know, I'm sure they'll sell out like hotcakes, you know? And of course the scalpers will probably get them, which sucks. So, you know, but Hopefully, Games Workshop will see that it's going to be a mass, a magnificent and massive money maker. I could see them doing an entire codex off of Creek, uh, the Death Core of Creek, just from those models. And uh, I know, you know, other guard regiments like Voistrans, you know, um, what are they, the Larens or whatever they're called. You know, Mordians and all them, they didn't really have a, you know, their own codex. But I mean, the Death Corps Krieg are so well loved and so desired by model, you know, modelists or, you know, hobbyists out there, rather. I, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a win-win, man, you know, if they would just do this. So, um, but who knows, who knows what's going to happen with that. But I'm looking forward to trying to read up on it. Again, if you're not on our Discord channel, please, uh, you know, if you got Discord or even look up our Facebook, I'm posting there and Discord when I'm going live. So that way, YouTube's little 15 minute whatever deal, um, you'll know. And again, I'm going to try to be on 8 o'clock, you know, Eastern Standard Time every night, but, you know, give or take some, you know, minutes or whatever. Uh, you know, there's other things that have to come first. So, I'm sure you guys understand. I definitely need to invest in some more clippers though. My Games Workshop ones broke uh, a month or so ago. This one's kind of recessed in for some reason. But again, it's going to be on the ground, so not something I have to necessarily worry about. Just like this little piece right here um, that's, you know, messed up. That is going to be on the inside and on the ground. So, again, not something I need to concern myself with or get bent out of shape over. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes resin is so brittle. And then you get stuff like that where it's super hard. 
and what I'm doing here, while I'm not too concerned about making it all level and that kind of stuff, I'm, I am trying to make it somewhat level where I'm breaking it down so that when I put it together, you know, the wheels can support the rest of the carriage uh, to help me line up the actual cannon. Oh, and I also had a bad, a bad mold job um, on this part. If you guys take a look at the right, uh, the right hook, you can see where it's all bent and everything. Um, yeah, I could probably heat that up or whatever, but again, is the juice worth the squeeze? I don't know. Um, trying to glue it strong enough that I can kind of bend it over but it's really twisted. Well, it seems to be working somewhat. At least enough that, you know, it's, it, I mean, no one's really gonna know, but maybe if you were like a real tank or, you know, military vehicle enthusiast, um, you might look at for all those details and things like that. I'm also thinking about making my own uh, Trojan support vehicle. Um, but I, I was thinking if I make that, um, if I make that, you know, Manticore again, like I did for the Steel Legion, um, I could probably just put, you know, the devices for hooking it up on, you know, onto that. And then you've got that vehicle that can transport you know these things and then they're all together anyway so and trying to think hmm I just realized something if I do the manticore that's gonna require me to have one more ordinance officer because the ordinance officer can only use one ordinance thing you know per turn last one but I could have swore some of these wheels had other flashing on them just I might have taken it off while we were talking and I didn't even notice yep that's what it looks like all right so now we're gonna get into gluing these bad bo bad boys together um, the goal here is of course to line up the messed up spots and that's it but what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna clean our area off a little bit so I don't have to deal with all of this stuff getting stuck to everything. And I need to make sure it all goes in the trash. Got the little ones. All right. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find all of the ones that have the, wait a minute, let me think about that. Yeah, all the ones that have the the outer hub right here and I'm gonna put those face down with the, the the gnarly part facing me uh, that's not one of them I have to start paying attention a little bit better I'm gonna glue the wrong thing together these pieces and so like I said before what I tend to do is uh, um, I tend to put the glue on the piece so that it drips down you know down into it and forms the bond that way instead of just sitting it in there and hoping that you're squashing enough of it up into the recesses that you need um, I just want to dry fit here make sure yep that's correct all right so 
and I'll get that on there. I'm going to line up the rivets and the messed up part. And by lining up the rivets, that will line up my my uh, spokes, if you will, or the wheel itself. Okay. And again, crazy glue. That working time is amazing. So I don't have to worry so much about it gluing right away. And if it does, you know, for some odd reason, which has happened once or twice, um, I can easily, you know, it's it's not bonded enough or cured enough that I can't go back and you know and actually mess with it, you know, and, you know, twist it to where I need to be or break it free. And again, crazy glue, super cheap, um, but it works. I've been using it for decades. I like the nozzle, you know, I, I like everything about it really. So, my little grots in there making noises. Not sure what she's talking about though. less is more with the glue but something like this you know I'm not too concerned about it it's gonna glue eventually and this isn't exactly something you know I want coming apart So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the other other deal. I'll cut this free. And we're going to get the tools put in this one. Oh, that was another thing. This uh, this particular piece, the tool um, the tool parts that hold the tools on were so jacked up I actually had to break one free and then carve out what I could and then glue it back on. You probably won't notice it, you know, once it's all painted, but still, it's just one of those things. Probably not a problem you would ever have with an actual plastic model, but the day that that'll happen, hell is frozen over and Games Workshop has developed a brain. And then, of course, all of our wallets will be screaming. It's, I'm telling you, man, it's amazing that this this model range is not in plastic. It, it literally baffles the mind. Get this going here. Breaker bar and sledgehammer. is afraid of same thing as far as the hole the hole is not there where it needs to be um, dang it man it really stinks and I hope I don't break that off hole there there's not a hole on this side sorry you guys can't really see what I'm talking about but right where I'm trying to push this this blade in there's no hole there and there needs to be otherwise the tool will not slide through so I don't 
can't really do it from the other side because the hole's not that big either. And this is exactly the problem I had with the last one. And I ended up having to break this part off and then carve it out. But I'm going to try something else. I'm just going to try to take my time here, carve it out so I don't have to break that. There's no telling what's going to happen here. Jeez, man, that's pretty hard. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can do a drill bit with a smaller drill. That one still might be too big. Yeah, that's too big. All right, we'll do this small one here. Um, don't know. This is going to work out. There we go. Got to switch the head around. Try to go in from this side a little bit. So far, so good. Whoops, I felt the breakthrough. Back up, back up. Oh, there it is. So now we'll go in through this side. Yep, broken through. And then we'll try to round this out as best we can but we actually have to square it up or we're gonna have to make the hole bigger with the drill bit because by not doing that I won't be able to get the breaker bar in there at least we have the hole now looks like we're we're in good shape now um, Sort of. <laughs> I spoke too soon. All right, let me see if I can maybe push the breaker bar through. I don't know. Just get it to fit down in there. What's, oh, that's what's stopping me. We got some more flashing on this side too. All right. If we can just push through ever so slightly. Nope. It's not going to do it. We're going to have to keep drilling. It's just asking for my thing to break. Now, I could probably, you know, if I didn't really care, I could probably just, you know, cut it and put one on one side and the rest on the other, but I don't want to do that. I just don't. I mean... Round that out just a little bit more with the blade, and I think we'll be good to go. As long as I don't go crazy here, so. try it again the reason why the average oh crap average Warhammer fan is not buying these models I guess besides the price tag there we go we got it that was 
outstanding. Awesome. Uh, yep. Just making sure I put it on the same way as the other ones. I think I did. I know that the. Yes, I did. Okay, great. I mean, not that it, I guess, necessarily has to, but it would make more sense. All right, now we need the hammer, sledgehammer, and this should not be a problem, I hope. There we go, got it. Oh, crap. Dang, so that was very brittle right there and I just snapped it. Ah, gotta love it, gotta love it. So that piece is done and the other one's done so now what is next that we have to actually worry about um, oh that's right I'm not gonna be able wait yes I will okay so let me just go ahead and put these in as I'm looking at that doesn't matter which one goes where because they're going to still bend. Oh man, got to stick and drill another hole, man. Try not to poke yourself with the drill. Yep. The joys of resin. horrible German or Russian or Austrian or whatever accent. far enough over this way. Okay. Got it. Gotta be careful, it's getting some residual cutting on the, the the model right about here. Okay. Also I'd like to say thank you to one of my new subscribers. We're up to 59 now awesome thank you so much we didn't have this these many problems with the last one did we wish I had some Vaseline or something here that would make this a little slicker. I don't know if water would work or not. keep the, the angle straight as I push it in or I'll snap it off. Alright, so that one's good. There's the other one. Let me guess, same problem? Yep. Come on. Can a freaking Kriegsman catch a break? Nope. The Emperor says no. Two 
Two down, two to go. Clean this up a little bit here. So these you guys that are watching, what are you working on? goal is to get these done and then our next project will be all the heavy weapons teams and uh, we'll be done with all of the infantry ish gosh man are they both like that oh, son of a gun man Pretty smooth. And let's see here. Got a little bit of a, there we go. All right, so that's not there. All right, so those are done. Um, let's go ahead and we will go ahead and mount these buffers onto the cannon itself, the barrel for both. I don't like how the mold part was where it actually connected with this because it's right on some stinking threads or you know metal parts so as far as cleanup goes it's a real pain in you know pain in the ass here So if you're watching how I'm doing this, I'm basically just scraping at the, you know, the joint here across to clean it up instead of cutting in all the time. Sometimes I will, like right here I'm going to, but I'm trying to be careful about cutting because you only have so much to work with here before you lose the detail. This is just way too much resin build up here.
this is a part that I can't exactly do later. Um, I mean, I guess I can, but I'm going to be messing around with the barrel underneath it when my fingers can be right where they are supporting this. Instead of having to be underneath the barrel, bending it, potentially snapping it, you know, that kind of thing. The other thing is my guns aren't going to stay, you know, they're not going to stay looking just like that. They're going to have, you know, camo netting and stuff like that draped over them. So it'll cover up, you know, some of this that you won't even be able to tell. Not to mention, you know, wear and tear, you know, whatever you want to call it. All right, so let's see here. I got two cannons here, both of these. And I want to, firstly, I'm going to rough this up a little bit in the inside. So they're just sitting there. And then again, I'm going to go down with my gluing, not glue the barrel, and then try to make this stuff work. I want the glue to drip down on its own. I'm not saying you have to do that. It's just, it just always seems to work better for me when I do that. And I don't. I mean, in my mind, I understand why it works. Maybe explaining it, maybe not the best, other than the fact that it works. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, Todd Howard from Bethesda. It works. It, it just works. And it doesn't work. But these, this actually works. So, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, Bethesda game, game developers uh, who did Skyrim and all that kind of stuff. And... That was the thing, you know, about Fallout 76. You know, oh, it works, it just works, and then and nothing was working. So, hopefully you guys are getting that reference. Okay. Some of this stuff is not, we'll say, mandatory at the moment. So I'm not focused on it. This, however, will be. And again, Man, they put this spot for the mold injection in just the worst possible spot, in my opinion, for cleaning it up and everything. got to be careful about getting in there with the clippers again because if you don't if you're not careful you'll end up with something like this see that that groove there right there that broke off now that's easily fixable but and, and I mean you can be as careful as you want to be and it still might happen but I mean that's what I was doing I was doing just what you see here being careful and it just broke but be prepared, you know, be prepared. So far, if I had any any positive to say about this, I haven't seen really any any of these models so far, knock on wood, <laughs> um, where I have to fill in holes and stuff like with Citadel Finecast. Have I seen Starfield? No, um, I, they just released a trailer for it, huh? Interesting. I have not. Interesting. I wonder if it's, it's going to 
be anything like No Man's Sky or whatever. When's it due out, Nick? Close some of my windows here. I've got too many things open that I wanted to look at. And that's just the way it gets, man. You end up opening up all kinds of all kinds of videos and stuff. Starfield trailer, 4K, official release date 2021, join the Constellation team as a first in-engine in look at Bethesda's Starfield releasing November 11th of 2022, so we've still got an, another year and a half, looks like. Um, how long is this video? Two minutes and 19 seconds I think we can deal with that and I'm not even sure this is the actual trailer but let me get a window up here guys here we go here we go They say, the wonder is, not that the field of stars is so vast, but that we have measured it. You're part of Constellation now, part of our family. What you found, it's the key to unlocking everything. This is all we've been working towards. We've come to the beginning of humanity's final journey. That's why we're here. To discover what's out there. Okay, well, 
Yeah, well, that's what it just said in there. So um, what I would say is, um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but a lot of the artwork in there, I mean, heck, as soon as he started walking in the corridor there, it looked exactly like he was in a vault. So I'm just saying, um, you know, it is what it is. But uh, let's see here. Anyway, you know. I mean, you know, everybody's going to have their own art style, and there's nothing wrong with that. But, all right. So, where are we at here? Okay, so, anyway, this is what I'm working on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it early this evening. And uh, I will be back on again tomorrow with updated progress. And hopefully, if all goes well, I will um, be working on heavy weapons teams instead of Earthshaker cannons. So thank you guys so much. Please, again, like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, that's the stuff that helps the channel and gets it out there with the algorithm. Please sign up for our Discord, Angry Badger Minis, and as well as on our Facebook so that you'll know when I'm going online quicker than YouTube will decide to tell you. So, um, and if you want to support the channel or anything, all the links are down below. And we'll see you next time.